What's up guys? Welcome to a brand new episode of Smart with Prachi. This is Prachi. Now, before starting with today's writers and today's letters, I have a very important question for you all. Um, it's 31st of December. Do you make New Year's resolutions? Yes, I'm asking a very cliched question, I know that. But there's just something very important I want to share with you all on this regard, okay? A lot of us, we'll see that, you know, people make New Year's resolution, but they don't actually follow them through. There's a lot of internet jokes about it, but there's scientific evidence and data that this can actually work beautifully for you, okay? Personally, if you ask me, I make New Year's resolutions every year. I actually write them down in a lot of detail. There's a reason why this works for me. There are two reasons for this. Now, Number one, there's actual scientific data to prove that uh, when you have a bigger target in life, for example, if your target in life is to say retire early, by the age of 45, you want to retire. When you have that life goal, your smaller goals, your smaller life targets have to be aligned with those goals. Otherwise, you're moving in all directions. However, when you have like, okay, you know what, I need to retire by the age of 45. So I need to have these investments, I need to have savings, I need to be earning this much. If I don't earn this much, I need to switch my job and things like that. It gives you direction, it helps you achieve that goal. It is very, very, it's a very good way of achieving your bigger life goals. Okay, when you write them down in smaller bits and pieces. And number two, uh, here's how I like to do, okay, here's what I like to do. I don't write my New Year's resolutions in a vague way. I write them down very specifically. I break them down as to how I'm going to achieve these targets. For example, a lot of people, when they write their New Year's resolutions, they are like, okay, I want to be healthy. I want to be fit. I want to take better care of myself. Instead of writing, join the gym from January 1st. Instead of doing that, instead of saying, stop eating so much of junk food, write down what your problem areas are. For me, I have been planning my New Year's resolution since I think November now, you know. So plan it out. How do you plan it out? Instead of just joining the gym on 1st of January and quitting after 10 days, which is very likely to happen. It happens to a lot of people. You say, okay, you know what? I'm not really in the zone to start working out right away. So in the month of January, for every day, every day in January or five days a week in January, I will go for a walk for 15 minutes. 15 minutes walk every single day for January. In February, 15 minutes walking and some stretching and some basic exercises. From the month of March, I will join a gym and I will find a personal trainer to force me to go to the gym every day in the month of March. From the month of April, I'll get used to it as I'll be able to do gymming on my own. So by the end of next year, December, you probably will be, you know, healthier and more fit right so things like that you break it down find out where your problem areas are and see so when you have a layout it's just easier to achieve your targets so uh yes guys that's what i want to start today's video with and now moving to the first letter of the day uh let's call a first writer of the day fan 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 okay so fan says hi prachi i've been married to my wife for two years her parents visit us from time to time they have a horrible habit of snooping around the house and looking through our stuff Versus they have versus that they even have opinions on everything. Imagine getting a lecture on condom usage from in-laws. This time they found my file where I keep my salary details, insurance papers, investment details. It's very personal. I noticed it lying on the table after getting back from work. And my wife had a huge fight where she kept defending her parents, even suggesting that as parents they have a right to know. It made me furious. So I took out all the keys and locked up all my cupboards before leaving the house the next day. My wife is now angry for not trusting her parents. She wants me to apologize to them. I know it was kind of disrespectful of me, but what could have I done? She is excessively attached to her parents, Prachi. She shares every personal detail of her lives with her mother, takes her advice on every matter. Her dad's does, sorry, her dad is overprotective. She calls herself daddy's little angel. It's been so hard at times. There have been so many incidents. I feel like ending our marriage at times. Fan, first of all, thank you so much for writing this letter, bringing this to our attention because it's actually a very, very common problem that people face. Before moving ahead, let me clarify something for all my viewers. As adult children, we all are responsible for our parents. You have to take care of your parents. They are getting older. You have to be there for them. It's very important. It's good if you love and respect your parents. If you can look back at your childhood and say, I am such a lovely childhood. My dad pampered me a lot. My mom pampered me a lot. I was so naughty. It's good if you can look back at your childhood and things like that. It's healthy, right? When you meet your parents after your marriage and there's a special bond that nobody understands you. People are being a little silly. That's fine. That's actually great. It's healthy again right all of this is fine i'm not saying this is wrong however this is important this cannot be your identity 
your identity has to include a lot of other aspects of your life as well as an adult understand something guys being an adult is a privilege of course it comes with its own responsibilities but you're in charge of your own life and that's a beautiful thing an adult man calling himself mama's boy an adult woman calling herself daddy's little angel that's not cute it's ridiculous it's unhealthy think about all the animals in the animal kingdom dogs cats lions tigers when the child becomes an adult they become less they become more independent of their parents as they grow into adulthood they detach themselves from their parents you have to do the same thing now i know some of you will say but prachi that's wrong and humans are not like other animals i agree therefore as you grow up as you become an adult you still take care of your parents that's very important you still love your parents however you're also an individual now you can't do this you cannot be this person as an adult that's not healthy for you the world will eat you up how will you have your own family how will you raise your own children if you're still doing this you have to be your own individual you can love your parents respect your parents but say mom dad this is not okay this is not working for us okay for example back in your days you didn't have cell phone so maybe you don't understand that why i need to use my cell phone so much but this is where all my work is this is where i connect with all my friends so this is how this is how it works for me okay be respectful be gentle but stand your ground where required now coming to your problem fan obviously respect is a give and take thing first of all i don't even think you've disrespected her parents in any way sorry about that sound um first of all i don't think you've disrespected her parents in any way but your wife may not be able to understand this right now and here's a tricky part okay understand that your wife has lived like that all her life with her parents being being her umbrella sheltering her okay so in her mind she needs to retrain her brain to understand that now she's an individual married to you you will have to you will have to retrain her brain how do you do that by first helping her understand where things are going wrong you have to be very gentle and very patient i'm sorry this is going to be hard for you but this is just the harsh reality of things so you sit down and start talking to your wife about this how do you talk you don't see your parents did this you did this no don't do that don't make it sound like you're accusing her or her parents because she's very attached to her parents right now what you need to do is tell her that listen uh, you know i love your parents because of them i have you in my life i have so much of respect for them for for me they are my family this whole incident with the locking of the cupboards and everything uh I'm sure you'll understand I didn't mean to disrespect them I was just feeling that my privacy was being taken away maybe you'll understand this better with an example when my parents come over okay when my parents come over imagine if my mom starts going through your lingerie drawers she opens your laptop and starts reading your emails uh she uh, checks your phone every day you will feel a little uncomfortable right for me this was the same thing your parents knowing about our condoms talking to me about all these things i'm uncomfortable with these topics with your with your parents because for me they are your parents i have a lot of respect for them a lot of regard for them okay so keep repeating that you care about her parents but at the same time also mention where your inconvenience lies and why by giving her examples that she may be able to relate to so when you do that this helps okay in the conversation you can also talk about how you're not asking her to prioritize you over her parents as an individual as every individual you can have multiple things in your life which are really really important okay you don't have to make one more important than the other that's fine right i can love my parents i can love my spouse i can love my pet i can love i don't have children but i can love my children i can love my career okay now for example an individual okay goes to the office is a very important day in the office okay you can give this example to your wife there's a very important day at office but suddenly there's an emergency at home a medical emergency he gets a call what is he supposed to do no matter how important his career is to him that day the family needs to take priority because there's a medical emergency right that day the family becomes more important however for example this even happened with me and my husband uh, this was a third anniversary and um, you know it was a very special day we had planned the whole day you know everything was there then suddenly something really important really really important comes up at his office so we are like you know what we can always celebrate the anniversary tomorrow work is really important today you go and you first focus on your career that day the career became more important than family 
right so you can prioritize things discuss it in a more mature way once you start having more open communication she is more likely to understand your point of view and you know she can very gently tell her that i don't want you to fight with your parents just tell your parents that see uh, mom you know what don't look at his papers no he gets very annoyed he doesn't like it say it in a polite respectful way but stand up for you okay um okay so moving to the next writer of the day who we're going to call light first writer was fan second writer is light light says hi prachi i'm a 23 year old girl who just landed her first job earlier last year the pay isn't much but it is fine for now because of this i decided to live with my sister and her husband since it's the same city now they have a 2 year old child and expect me to help take care of him The last three weekends, I've not been able to step out even once with my own friends because they make their own plans and leave me home alone to babysit. Even for New Year's, I could not make any plans. Two days a week, I also have work from home, so my sister has taken up vocational courses on those two days. She is out for the whole day. How am I supposed to work from home and take care of a crying, screeching baby at the same time? She hates the idea of getting a nanny to take care of the baby, so that's out of question entirely. I found out recently that my sister is planning to get pregnant again. So I asked her how she plans to take care of the second child. She casually pointed out that it's no issue since I will be there to help. It really set me off. Prachi, it's not that I'm ungrateful for the for getting a place to live in, but how can they put so much responsibility on my head? They feel so entitled to my time and help that now they plan to have a second child too. What about my life? I wanted to confront her but I don't want to rock the boat or create a big scene. How should I handle this situation? Um look light there are two ways of looking at it okay very objectively there are two ways of looking at the situation and both of these point of views are correct so you have to see what works for you where your thought process comes from and where you stand. What are the two ways of looking at it number 1 uh um, which is a more traditional standpoint that we live in a family we live together as a community as a family we are there to help each other we are there for each other so you know i will take my sister for granted she will take me for granted at times and that's just how things are going to be it's a give and take relationship okay she will give me a place to live i will take care of her child okay it's a give and take and slightly taken for granted relationship for a lot of people this actually works it actually works for a lot of people so i'm not going to deny that okay so see if that thought process is working for you number 2 you can look at it in this way that uh, okay i have my own life uh, she has her own life we shouldn't be interfering into each other's lives uh, she needs to figure out her own stuff i need to figure out my own stuff okay that's another point of view which works for a lot of people personally i'm someone who goes for the second thought process because the boundaries are very clearly marked okay and i'm someone who likes to decide things with a lot of logic so for me clearing those boundaries and having logic in place helps me understand how i want to live my life however you can choose either of the two options now in case you choose the first option here's what i would like to suggest this is what you can explore uh you can sit down with your sister and be like you know what i'm happy to help you with your child but there are times when i need some need to go out myself so can we do this uh i understand you don't believe in keeping a nanny but see two days a week when you go out only for those two days you have a nanny around okay i will keep a very close watch on the nanny okay so she does not mistreat your baby i will keep a close watch so that when when the baby needs diaper change and the baby needs to be fed that is taken care of i don't have to be actively involved okay so you can figure out those things you can tell her in a, a little bit more in advance that hey next week i'm planning to go out with my friends so i hope you guys are not like you know depending on me for this because i want to go out with my friends so see if you can have that kind of a communication if you're set, settling for the first option which is you know community family living style where you're there for each other you can do that okay uh, however if you feel that okay that's not your way of life and that's not going to work your sister is not going to listen she will want you to be more involved second option like i said the more practical option is to you know understand that she has her own life you have your own life so very simply you can just go and tell your sister that hey listen um thank you so much for giving me a place to live but i'm actually thinking of switching my jobs i may have to leave the city soon okay and when you have this communication when you have this conversation you start looking for a new job if not a new job then you at least start thinking of moving out there are a lot of co living spaces pg a lot of options which are also very affordable affordable housing options you can actually do that 
as for my opinion how i personally feel about things guys see it's a fact okay it's a fact um there are no free lunches okay when you take favors you have to return the favor and uh, sometimes it's just hard to balance it okay when it comes to things like favors it's very subjective it's not like you know it's it's not like a weighing scale where you can weigh them against each other for you it may look like you're taking a small favor and giving back a lot more in return for them it could be the other way around so there's no way to weigh them the best thing to keep in mind is that there are no free lunches in life when you take favors you have to return the favors so yeah you know you pick and choose accordingly so yes guys that's all i uh, wanted to share with my two riders of the day fan and light uh, share your own comments in the comment section below if you have similar stories to share share them with me in the comment section below i would love to hear from you guys bye bye have a great weekend everybody have a great new years everybody have lots of fun stay safe stay very very safe that's very important take care and bye bye bye